Hey everybody, this is Strategy Wizard again, and this is Ravager. Hello! And this is our first video back together, doing a video after my hands got completely messed up by a stupid allergic reaction. Yeah, it's horrible! It's, horrible! Yeah, it's finally over with, so we can get back... Take uh, care of it. Yeah. So, anyway, today we're going to be doing a review of Minecraft Builders and Biomes. It's published by Ravensburger. It's designed by Ulrich Blum. Mm. Ages 10 and up. Two to four players. 10 to 99 age on age? Yeah, the age is 10 to 99, but if you're 100, I think we'll still allow you to play. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, 30 to 60 minutes long, depending on the number of players. That seems pretty reasonable. So I bought this because uh, if you've watched my other video, whenever I compared uh, the Minecraft card game to Splendor, you'll know that I did not like the Minecraft card game very much. Nathan did, or Ravager, whatever. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I liked it a lot, but this is just pretty much a better version of it. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's just better. Yeah, if you want Minecraft, th this caught my attention because it just seemed like it had more actual Minecraft in it. So I bought it not knowing exactly how to play, but I knew enough to know I would probably enjoy it. And I figured Ravager would enjoy it. So let's go ahead and go down to the table. We'll show you how to play, and then we'll be able to tell you what we think. Okay, so right now I've got this set up for technically two players. We have two little folks in here, and you get these little standees, which, you know, they get the job done. And you put them in the middle of all of these tiles. Now, here's the thing. I've got it squeezed really tight to make sure I can get as much of this in the camera as possible. You can spread the tiles out a little more so you have more room to get your guys in there. You're, you're moving on the grid in between all of the tiles. So you never stand on the tiles. You're always moving in the corners. So, here, so here's the setup. You have stacks of four tiles in the middle, which have a mixture of enemies and buildings that you can build. You have treasure chests on the outside, so this would be a grid spot you could go to between, uh, you know, between the, the four corners of two items and uh, two building slash monster tiles. You also, each player, which you can't see the other players, but each player is going to have a a basically a play mat where you track your experience here and it shows you basically your area. You, you'll build buildings from here, put them here, and it'll be important the type of terrain, the type of building, and everything as you play. There's also a stack of blocks here that you build into a cube. Now Nathan, show us, or Ravager I should say, show us the, um, the cool tool that they give you to put together this thing. Here, here bring this over here. This. Okay, this basically it's just literally it's four pieces of cardboard. You just put them together and you take it apart as needed. But what what happens is you'll take this, you'll put it on top of this. Uh, what do you, what do you call that bedrock? Um, bedrock. That's bedrock. Yeah, the bedrock tile down there. You'll set this here, and you'll literally pour the cubes into this from a bag or whatever wherever you have them stored. And amazingly enough, they will pretty much get exactly like this. And to the extent that they don't, as you're pouring it and they're all kind of maybe piling up too high, you just kind of shift it around like this and everything will just start falling into place and you will have a perfect cube by the time it's over. I mean, it works every time. Yeah, it does pretty much because let me tell you, if you if these blocks were just... If you had to just, stack it by hand, it'd take forever. I know. And this way it has a and very... It fall over. Yeah, yeah, I could, yeah, it's, yeah, it's hard to do this. I mean, you had to know. Yeah, it'd be a nightmare to have to do it yourself. So this is a very, very wonderful little contraption, and or and it randomizes what's in how the cube is built. Or you could use something else, but let me tell you, this is easy because all you do is pour it up, and it's all figure it out. You don't have to put it together, and you're like, eh, it's so hard that way. Yeah, this is a that's a dream of a wonderful thing that they did for us there. Mm -hmm. Each player will also have a stack. Well, I say each player. There's actually, I think, only two of these, and you can have to four players, but two players can share if you have to. But this shows you the scoring in each different stage of the game. So we'll get to that in a second. You also have, there's two of these that people can share, and this is really handy. It shows you all the turn actions. So on your turn, you take two different actions. It tells you what actions you can take. And it also, there's, there's different languages uh, available for these actions. I, I, I can't remember how many languages, but there's a ton of these. So almost any lang any major language will be available. Then each player also has a stack of initial item cards. Three poison potatoes, a stone sword, and a wooden sword that you will be able to use to fight with. So, Nathan, 
Let's go over the actions. First one, you collect two blocks. How do you show show us how you collect blocks? Um. Okay. So you have you can't pick this one up because it has to be a side, but not it can't be that either. It has to be two sides you can see and the top. That's right. So you at the beginning you can only pick from the four corners because those are the only ones where you can see the top and two sides. This one you can only see the top and one side. So for example, in this, this case, you collect, if you take this action, you collect two blocks. So Nathan, show me, or Ravager, gosh, I'll never remember, get this right. <laughs> but okay. Show me what getting two blocks. You just wouldn't do that. Okay, you always get two blocks whenever you're picking blocks. So, so you can take that one, you get a wood. And obsidian, definitely obsidian. Okay, now here's the thing. Each one of these colors, for anyone who plays Minecraft, you'll know what they mean probably, but there's stone for gray, sand for the beige, obsidian is black, and then this is emerald, and there's also the wood, the brown. Here's the thing. Emerald is actually the best, because emerald is a wild. It counts for anything. Even obsidian. Any, even obsidian. So emerald really is the best thing to get, but obsidian is rare, so that's also a good one to get. So that's one thing you can do. You can collect blocks, which you'll need to build buildings later. Okay, the next thing is you can move Z zero to two spaces and then reveal cards. So Nathan, sh let's just pretend that you're uh, blue. Go ahead and move and let's and show me what you would do. Okay, this is my character. I like him a lot. Oops, so tight. So, so he shows to move one space. You explore where every, everything in this area. Yeah, we go and explore and you flip over everything. So that means if, if Ravager would have decided to move only zero spaces, then he would have actually just turned over the tiles in, right around where he was in the original starting location. Oh, I thought you turned them over. Oh, yeah. But since he moved one space... Ooh, skeleton! Okay, so here's the deal. Of course, they have these tiles squeezed real tight to fit everything in the camera, which makes it a little harder, but of course, if you had it set up to be comfortable, you'd have more room and it wouldn't be so hard. But Like if you had a bigger camera. Yeah, or a bit, well, yeah, but That's if you're playing, you wouldn't worry about it tightening it up. But here's the thing: whenever you flip these over, you'll see there's three different buildings. In this case, these are two bridges, and this is a dwelling, and then there's a monster. So now. Ravagers discovered, wow, there's all these different things over here in this area of the board. So that's what moving does. It reveals things for you. Now the next action, you can build a structure. So let's just say over the course of the game, Ravager had collected, he's right now he's already got uh, obsidian and wood, which are two of the components for this building. I'll go ahead and show this up close. The, each building shows you some important elements. It shows you the type of terrain you're on, which is important for the first stage of scoring. Then it shows you what type of material it's made out of. This is an obsidian structure, which will be important for the second stage of scoring. And finally, this is a dwelling, a house, which is important for the third stage of scoring. So it conveniently shows you the three things that you need to know as you go through the different scoring stages. This will give you two points immediately as soon as you build it, and it tells you how much you need to build it. So let's just say it comes back to Ravager's turn. He has, he already has one obsidian and one wood. So let's say for another action he takes an obsidian and he needs wood. There's no wood available to get. You know, the one over here that he could get is sand, that sand, that sand, and those are not, the, the ones that he can get here aren't. But he can take this emerald as a wild so that if he took that action, his second action could be to discard these, you just move them to the side somewhere, and he can claim this building. Now, he just chooses a place on his player map to build it. Now here's the thing, before we show how that would work, or what, how you would decide where to put it, we'll go through the scoring portions of the game. There, in the first stage, A, you'll, this is basically telling you diagonals don't count for adjacency, but for each, for all the adjacent places that you have, if there's, you'll choose one category. Do you want to score your forest areas, your sand areas, your mountain areas, or your tundra areas. So, if you scored your tree areas or your forest areas, you'd be looking, f you'd say, for each adjacent one, in this case, there's two adjacent right now, you would say two times three. You'd get three points times the two places you have next to each other, and that'd be six points. Okay, that's a decent. The tundra is already worth six, because even with just one, it's already that good. So, you'd have to, but it, whenever you build, you don't have to build a sand on top of a sand. You can actually, you know what, let's get rid of that forest area. We're going to make a, a new sand area with this building. Now, there are two sand areas connected, which would give you four points apiece, since they're connected. That'd give you eight points. So, that's what you would score, because that's the best thing you can do. If you had two mountain areas together, that'd be ten. If you had three mountain areas, together to be 15 etc so this scoring happens whenever the first layer of this cube is gone 
So as you see that dwindling, you're really trying to build things to connect your region so that you have a lot of the same uh, biome or environment, whatever you want to call it, together. So that's one thing that's important about building your buildings. So that is the build structure part. Now, fight mob, which is the same thing as saying fight bad guy or enemy. Nathan, show us how you would fight an enemy. Oh, man, I've been doing this for a little while. If you're already next to him, in this case, you're touching one of his corners, you can say, you know what, I'm going to fight this skeleton. So let's go ahead and do it. So he's going to take this stack of tiles that he already had. Now, we're going to imagine that on a, a later turn, Ravager slash Nathan went over here and turned over all these tiles. And he went, woo, looky there, a diamond sword. That's how much damage this diamond sword does if he was to reveal it whenever he attacks. The bow only does two, but it lets you draw an extra tile whenever you're attacking. So let's just say that he had picked these up, because one of the actions is to collect a weapon. That's the last one. You'll want to collect weapons before you fight an enemy. So let's say as an action he had picked up both of the, he picked up that and as another action he picked this up. Now you can't do the same action twice right. on a turn, but we'll just say enough turns have happened that he's picked both of these up. Right. He's going to take this stack of his starting items and the new ones. Go ahead and shuffle them up a little more. Okay. Every time you fight you're going to shuffle these up. That way you don't know for sure what you're going to draw. Poison potatoes do nothing for you. But your other items do because for how many hearts it shows that's how much damage you do. Okay. So let's just so so you turn over three. So Nathan, go ahead and show them what you draw. Hopefully it's a bow. Okay, okay. so right now this skeleton has three health, so you want to do three points of damage. Right now Oh man in, again see, <laughs> I've been I've been kind of messing around with my chest stuff or my weapons and I've been getting poison potatoes every time I can never beat three and I lost and in this again. case he wouldn't have succeeded. With two two hearts and two poison potatoes, not enough to hurt or kill, rather, the skeleton archer. So in this case, in the the base, I mean, the way you play the game, if you lose, you don't lose anything, man. But it's still that's the thing. You basically, you, you wasted your action, is what you did. But if you would have won, let's say he didn't do that poison potato. Let's say he drew another. Okay, another poison potato. Let's say he drew his diamond sword. That would have been enough. He would have killed this skeleton archer. Bam! And he would claim this. Now he would get three points right off the bat. He would track that on his point tracker here, and then. He also gets a late game bonus, which means for every bridge that he has, and in this case they don't have to be connected, for every bridge that he has, he'll get three points. So now, Ravager knows, ooh, I need to try to get more bridges so I can get bonus points. I already got three, but I'll get even more points if I get more bridges. So he'll keep that until the end of the game. And you'll, so that, that's what, how the actions work. You can collect blocks, which will help you then build things later. You can move around to uncover different weapons or structures that you can build or enemies. You can fight those enemies and collect weapons so that you can fight them more effectively. That really is the meat of the game. Now I'll show you this. There's whenever you after you've completed uh, you know wiped out the first layer you'll do the A scoring and you'll flip it over now the next thing you're looking forward to is the B scoring so then whenever the second layer of this cube goes away you'll do this immediately so in this case you're looking for types of structures obsidian gives you the most and you want to have them connected once again so if you have three orthogonally adjacent obsidian structures you'll get 18 points and if you don't have any obsidian structures but you have a lot of wood let's say you have four wooden structures adjacent to each other you'll get 12 points so again you're looking for certain types of structures that you can get that'll give you the most points if you can build them together so in this case he already has one obsidian after you've gotten past the first stage you're not worried about what sand and mountain now you're just focused on trying to get more, more obsidian or whatever you already have well, now, that, 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 I should say this, there are some monsters that give you bonuses for having certain types of terrain. But, but that's if you, only at the end of the game. Yeah, that's only at the end of the game, and only if you have that kind of monster in your possession. Now, there's also the last stage. So whenever the third layer is gone from that cube, everyone's been mining and collecting resources for a long time, now you'll do the type of building. So adjacent, whatever buildings you have adjacent, whatever gives you the most points, you're trying to get the most bridges if possible because that gives you the most and there's also farms, dwellings, and decorative structures. So each time you go into a scoring phase you're trying to group things together so you can get the most points. That is the game. Now other things that you might find there's a lot of different structures that you'll see. Some are very easy to build like this. Two sand, no big deal. It's very cheap. You don't get any points but 
it's easy to build. So, you know, it, you have to decide what's worth it. Do you want to, what kind of, how much work do you want to put into building certain things? Now, this one, it takes a heap of a lot of resources, but it gives you four points. However, it's only a decoration, which is the worst thing for the end of the game. At the end of the game, decorations give you the least. But it's obsidian, which is the best structure for the second phase of scoring. So you have to decide at different points, you know, what's really worth building. Now, we'll just go ahead and flip some of these over. Oh, Enderman. He is the hardest monster to beat. Six health. He has six points immediately for beating him, and he gives you bonus points for every decoration that you have at the end of the game. And we have other buildings. A lot of different variety. And one of the things that I think is neat is the fact that you know, if you're a Minecraft player, it also gives you some interesting ideas of buildings you can create that are either functional or cool looking. I think that's really nice. And then there's creepers, which take four damage to kill, five points. And then some of them are different. Not all monsters of the same type have the same information here. You might get a few different points and there might be something different here. This means that you can spend him once you've beaten him. You can spend him to get an extra free action, which can actually... That's the only way you can do two of the same action in one turn, is if you use an, uh, use an enemy with that icon. But that's really the meat of the game. You're going to keep moving around, exploring, trying to find new treasure, weapons, build stuff. If you use the golden hoe, it's not very powerful, but it gives you two points or two experience immediately, etc., etc. That's the meat of the game. You're building. You're taking blocks, fighting bad guys, trying to get the most points. By the time it's all over, whoever has the most points wins. Okay, so this game, as you can see, has a whole lot more going on than the card game did, if you saw that video, or if you've played it. Yeah. And it's just not even, they're not even in the same ballpark. So, yeah. first of all, Nathan, let's talk about, or Ravager. I'm going to call him Nathan or Ravager, depending on what, it, what, what I feel like at the moment, I guess. <laughs> but, um, what do you think about the components, the pieces? Do you think everything is good quality? Perfect. I mean, the Minecraft game, a creeper looks like a creeper. Well, yeah, the artwork is very, is perfect. I mean, everything looks exactly right. The only thing that I would say about the component quality, I guess, is that the standees are not just super amazing, but they're effective. I mean, they get the job done. The standees are, you know, you put them on this little bitty plastic base, and that's, that's fine for, you know, if you want to have something to move, but it, I don't know. Mm. Is that really so great? It's good to me. I mean, kind of like Ultimate Wars, if you watch the video, I mean, it's great. Yeah, it, it gets the job done. I guess, and I don't even know necessarily what I prefer. I mean, I guess I prefer maybe some type of miniature or something that maybe the art, where there was actually artwork in the background instead of just a white background, but that's probably a little nitpicky. It really doesn't matter so much. I, there's, it, it doesn't matter. Apart from that, though, I do think everything else is nice. The, the cardboard is great quality. The blocks are really chunky and nice, the wooden blocks. So, we both appreciate the component quality. Do. What do you think about the replayability? Is it a game that you can come back and replay and have fun each time? Um, like maybe a day, like, or an hour, because, see, it takes so long. I mean, man. But it's, I could play it, like, once every day. And like, you would have fun every time. Have fun. So you think there's a lot of replayability? I think there's a lot. And I would say there's a good bit of replayability, too, because there's enough randomness that makes it to where you can't predict how things are going to go, but... Well, maybe one, maybe a few times in a day, not maybe every day, but it's replayable, definitely. Well, yeah, yeah you wouldn't want to play it every day, but, every, but you would want to play it pretty regularly. You'd be able to enjoy it and have a good time. Yeah. Because there's so much going on, there's so much excitement that... I don't know, the, the battles, you don't know if you're going to win. Even if you have great weapons in your stack, it doesn't, you don't know you're going to win. Because if the poison potatoes come up, you could still lose. So you have that, that, that push-your-luck element, that gambling element, which is fun and exciting. But also, the, the adventure of trying to go around, find the different buildings, and try to get what you need to build. And your opponents are trying to build stuff too, so they can try to build what you want. And if you're taking the blocks off this cube... You could see there's an emerald coming up that you can't reach, and if you take the blocks you need, you might open up someone else to get an emerald block, which is huge. I know. And man, this game has everything you need. It's scary, gambling, or that's kind of the same. And then it's got strategy, do you want to build this, do I want to build this? It's just so much. It's got everything. This game is amazing. Yeah, it does have a lot of great stuff going on that keeps things interesting. So, that being said, we're going to move to the strategic element because you just mentioned that. Do, do you think there's a lot of strategy in this game? We obviously do, but in what way? 
in the way of do you do you want to get more points or because or do you want to get the map filled up with the snow? Like let's just say you have four snows and you want five, ooh, but then one gives you more experience. You're like, hmm, which one should I get? Well, yeah, because some tiles give you instant experience points. Other tiles will give you points later during the scoring phase. So you have to decide how important is it to get points quick versus long-term benefit. Fighting bad guys that give you end-game points versus bad guys that give you an instant effect like food that makes where you can do get another action. So there's a lot of choices of what you think is the most important at the moment, and seeing what the other players are doing is important. Because if I see that... Ravager here is going to try to go for a certain building that I know is going to help him a lot. I might want to go build it just so he can't get it, even if it's not perfect for my layout. So Well, the problem with that is that, see, if you don't have anything it takes, then you pretty much just lose. You, it's, it's almost impossible to make it. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean? Explain that. Well, I mean, if, you're, if I have two blocks already on that thing, it's almost impossible for you to mess me up. Well, yeah, if you're already getting close, it can be tough. But if we both have a lot of blocks that we need to build it, I can spin an action to move over where you are and then build it. Even if it's not in my best interest, it could hurt you if I wanted to. It's one of those things that you have to decide. How important is it to hurt your opponent versus how important is it to focus on making your layout as powerful as possible. So there's a lot of strategy here. How, which blocks you pull, where you move, do you pick up some weapons for fighting monsters later? Even if there aren't any monsters visible, you might want to go pick up some weapons because you know monsters will show up and some of them give you good points and other bonuses. So that's important. Now, lastly, what would you rate this game? 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. So to you, this is top notch. Okay, so I would give this e for for that hey, I have to I'm gonna I'm gonna rate this as a kids game even though it they say ten and up. But Ravager, really, you're eight and you do great on this game. So the ten I don't agree with. I don't think you need to be ten to play this yeah, game. Yeah, you could be probably seven or six actually, and you could play it. Yeah, I could see seven. I could see seven to, and, and and you know if you're six, you a little bit of help and you could play it. In but, fact, I even won the first time. That's right. I mean, is this is a game that it's not overly complicated. There's and, and it works so well. But I, I'm going to rate it as a kids game because to me, it's it's a good family game. It works for a lot of different ages. But as a kids game, for something that it, it would be a nine out of ten for me. I mean, it just does so much right. It wow. keeps things interesting. You, that, that's close to me too. It's very close because to me, the fact there's so many things going on, the blocks that you're trying to pull from to get your resources, and doing adventuring around, trying to see what you can uncover, what kind of weapons are in the chests, or what kind of you know buildings can you build. Or fighting and, skeletons, you're it's so it's so gambling. Yeah, Will pushing you yeah. swords. Yeah, you're deciding, you know, do I have enough weapons in my inventory to have a good chance of winning? Do I want to take that chance? And it's all those different elements. I like the fact there's a lot of options, and, and it's user-friendly. The fact you have a tile that shows you the actions, it's great for everyone. Kids can easily look and see, oh, those are the actions I can take. So, And there's very little reading in the game, so that makes it to where it's also easier for younger kids. Even though there's a lot of things you can do, it's simple enough to where that, that basic little bit of reading, the actions are at least simple in, you know, mechanically they're simple. There's not a lot of, you know, challenging things that you have to think about. It's straightforward and simple. So. Kids game, excellent. I and know. even for me, I enjoy playing this game. It, it, and it, even when you get three foot pulls and potatoes, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but it's still so fun. Yeah, because you because then you just want to go try it again. You yeah. want to try to fight again, knowing I'll do better next time. And this this just gives that Minecraft feeling. Not everything about it's perfectly thematic, but because emeralds shouldn't be wild. But I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to add those little fun elements that make it interesting. And it just works. So I just have to say, Ravensburger, thank you for giving us a good Minecraft board game that well, actually gives you all the cool elements, the fighting the bad guys, building cool stuff. and it's just it, they, Thank you so much, Ravensburger. That's much appreciated. Wait, I do have one more comment. If you lose to like an Enderman or something, Instead of just not losing anything, you can lose a block or maybe a card. If oh, yeah. Not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ravager likes to add one little uh, bonus rule where if you fight and you lose, then you should lose one of your resources or something as a way of showing that you died or lost or something. Because you do lose stuff in the game. If you fight and you die, you lose your items. So, so Ravager likes to add that little thing. And you can do that, too. Like you make a little house rule to make it a little more... A little more nerve-wracking when you go fight something. That way, you really want to be prepared as much as possible. So, and if you don't want to, that's okay too. Yeah, it's, yeah. House rules if you want, because we think it makes it a little more thematic than it was already. But either way, the game is great, just as it is in the box. Absolutely wonderful. So, yes, 
10 out of 10 from Ravager, 9 out of 10 from Strategy Wizard. Great game. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Ravensburger, for the game. And we look forward to seeing y'all on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.